Right, morning fellas, welcome back to another Villa on Tour video today. I'm back doing the match reviews. Aston Villa played Leicester City yesterday at Villa Park. <sighs> Wasn't too good, was it? <laughs> yesterday was fun. Aston Villa 1, Leicester City 4. Now, going into the game, oh. I, I said I had this feeling, if you haven't already checked out the match day vlog, please go and do that. Uploaded that yesterday, but going into the game, I, I had this funny feeling that we might be able to get something. Um, but, you know, getting close to the game and when I, when I saw the team lineups and saw the Leicester team, it just put it into perspective that that side is absolutely unbelievable. And they, they are doing so well this season with a fantastic manager in Brendan Rodgers. Jamie Vardy, I'll talk about a little bit later, who's in a sensational form at the moment, so... It was always going to be a tough game, and let's just remember that Leicester City at the moment are a better side than Man City, Chelsea, Tottenham, all of these big sides, apart from Liverpool. So yeah, I just want to say, well done Leicester City, you know, they absolutely deserve their win, 100% they'll get Champions League football this year. They've had an unbelievable three or four years or so, um, fantastically run club, probably one of the better away fans um, that we've had at Villa Park this season, so... Fair play, Leicester. Go and enjoy your European tour next season because you've 100% deserved it. Now, I don't really have an issue with losing to Leicester City. I just think it's the way that we lost that I have a bit of an issue with. So, firstly, team lineup. Where was Gilbert? Um, you know, Elmo did okay midweek against Chelsea. Obviously, Gilbert only, only missed one game because of that. Uh, picked up too many yellow cards. Where was he? Elmo... Had a bit of a difficult game, didn't he, against Leicester? I think Gilbert offers that a little bit more. He's a lot quicker. He's a lot younger. Don't get me wrong, El Mohamed is a fantastic, you know, rotation option. But as a starting player in the Premier League, not for me. I think he's got that wand of a right foot. But, you know, that only comes off, you know, two or three times out of five. The rest of the time, he's he going to give the ball away or it's just going to go straight out or something like that. Also, Engels as well. I would have brought him back in for Concer. No, I'm not saying Concer has had a few rough games. I think he's been one of our standout players in the, in the last few games. But I just think it puts a little bit more pressure on Mings because Konsa is much less experienced and he almost needs Mings to guide him through games. I think if you've got Mings and Engels there, they've played with each other a lot more. I don't think there's as much pressure on Mings. I just think Engels is a little bit more comfortable. Don't get me wrong, in the future, Konsa will 100% be a starting centre-back for us. But right now, I just think I would have brought um, Engels back in. Now, getting into the game, first five, ten minutes, I think we did well. Um, you know, we were getting forward well, targeting um, Elmo, we were getting down the wings really well. Grealish was finding targets, was putting balls into the box, and just weren't coming off. El Ghazi, of course, hit the bar. From where I was sat in K4 in the upper hole, I couldn't see what was going on. I thought he just spooned it over or anything like that. I didn't actually know he hit the bar, and it's a golden opportunity because I know hindsight is a wonderful thing and everything like that, but if that goes in, it's probably a completely different game. Leicester might go on and win it. We, we'll never know. But if that goes in, we go 1-0 up. And Leicester, I know they've only conceded, you know, before yesterday, nine goals this season, which is unbelievable. Best defensive record um, in, in the league. So if we can go there and just, you know, get an early goal and just steady the nerves and just put a bit of pressure on them, make them concerned, I think that just eases the game off. Obviously, then Mings pulls up with an injury and you can see straight away he goes down holding the back of his leg, which we all know is a hamstring injury and, you know... They, you never come back on from a hamstring injury and I was really shocked to see Mings you know, go down for three minutes and then come on. That never happens with a hamstring injury and that worried me because as soon as that happened I'd think, well Leicester, if they had any sort of sense, they'd think, right, balls over the top, make Vardy run, make Mings run because he's clearly not comfortable. And yeah, I think he should have gone straight off. It's not like we don't have a, a suitable replacement on the bench. Engels, bring him on. Don't aggregate the injury to Mings. There's, just, there's no point when you've got a suitable replacement in Engels. And then a few minutes later, Wesley gives the ball away in the midfield. A few little interplays. One class ball. I can't remember who put it through. I think it might have been... Indeedy, I think I played a few to Vardy, goes around the keeper, spoons the first shot, and the whole end's go the whole end's going away, and all things like this. And then he slots it in, concerts on his ass, and then Vardy just stands there like this. Oh. Now, if that was any other player, I'd probably be really angry and throw my arms around, you know, because there's no need for that to just to wind up fans. But it's Jamie Vardy and I've I don't, I wouldn't say I've got a respect for him, but I just like the way he goes about business, just rattling fans of other teams. Um, he's a proper, 
unbelievable striker. Um, you know, he's 32 or 33 now, and you know, or he might be getting on a bit, but he's still got that unbelievable pace and just that now to getting in behind and just being in the right place at the right time. And you know, he gets in behind that defence so well, and he was just running the defence absolutely ragged all day. And then the song, you know, about Jamie Vardy's wife, which was just a bit weird, and it was probably the loudest we sang all, all game, which was a little bit disappointing. The atmosphere was really poor yesterday. Um, and you know, I said it in the video, if you're going to sing about Jamie Vardy's wife, he's going to score again, and he did. I'll talk about it later, but you always knew that was going to happen. Matt here on Twitter says, the Vardy song was all we had, and yeah, it probably was the loudest we sung all day. It just, it just didn't happen with the atmosphere yesterday. It was quite disappointing. And from then on, we looked a little bit disinterested, a little bit half arsed and then Leicester make it 2-0. Um, we stand off them a lot. I would love to know how many passes um, go into this move, because it's Chilwell, Madison down the left-hand side, one ball through. I think it's Vardy that puts it in, Ian Acho finishes it really, really well, and that's 2-0, and, you know, I think, I was sort of thinking, you know, that's game over, unless we get a goal for our time, um, which we did, obviously, Grealish, was a bit, came out of nowhere a little bit, from a corner, it's pinging around a bit, Grealish finishes it, there's a bit, little bit of controversy with VAR after that, and it was a bit of a funny one, but in the end, it got given, and that was absolutely massive, Grealish said after the game, you know, getting a goal at that point is absolutely huge, going in at 2-1, we probably maybe didn't even deserve that goal, um, but, you know, you think at half-time, we'll come out second half, you know, we'll hit some first 10, 15 minutes, keep it tight at the back, and just go all out to try and get that equaliser, and then we can push on, but it happened against Chelsea, it's happened against Leicester, within five minutes of the second half restarting, pretty much just throw the game away. It's a ball that comes in from a corner, literally easy as you like, Evans, fair play, fantastic header. I think Smith said after the game that Elmo got blocked off, but not for me, I don't think there's anything in it, I think from then on it's game over in the 49th minute. And, you know, that's pretty much it. I asked for your comments, of course, on Twitter. Um, there was a lot, a lot. I think there was over 100 comments, so thank you for that. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't already. James says, Why are the set pieces and crosses into the box causing so much trouble 16 games into the league season? Terry was one of the best Premier League defenders, but his experience doesn't seem to be helping out the lads cutting out the basics. Now, I talked about it on the Villa View podcast I did with Dan last week. Crosses and set pieces are so poor at the moment. Every cross looks like it's causing us problems. Um, whether it's concentration and focus or things like that, or whether it's just silly mistakes, we need to cut out the silly goals because we are conceding so many. Other end, you know, even without Wesley, which I'll talk about in a bit, we're scoring plenty of goals. Just defensively, man, we need to work on that. Crosses. It just, it just, whenever a ball goes into the box, it just worries me so much. We've got a massive, you know, back line. Connors six foot, whatever. Engel, six foot, massive. Ming, six foot five. Why can't we defend these? I think that's what we need to work on because that is the thing at the moment that is undoing all our good work going forward. Again, after 3 1, I think the Villa players just gave up a little bit, which is disappointing. Um, a ball over the top in the 75th minute. Vardy, one on one. He's never ever going to miss that. And he gives it big licks to the, uh, the North Stand again. Fair play to him, rattling our fans. But that is game over then. 4 1, 100%. Loads of people leaving. So then, that was game over. Let's talk about Wesley. I put out the tweet asking for your comments and every single one, well, every other one was Wesley this, Wesley that. Talk about Wesley, 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 Wesley. Joe on Twitter says, As confident as I am about staying up because we have a good team, if we don't add a striker to give us another option and push Wesley, do you think we could get dragged into a relegation scrap? Let's talk about Wesley. Before the Leicester game, I think, you know, I was very supportive of him. I think he had a great game against Man United. Even if he didn't score, he was occupying defenders. Although he was a bit isolated, I think he did a good job. But in the Leicester game, that was where it started to slip for me. It just got a little bit too much. I think his first touch is genuinely worrying for a professional footballer. Like, you put a ball over the top and his touch will carry him out into the touchline. It's just really, really poor. Um, you know, I know he's isolated. I know we could be doing more to get close to him. But again, he could be doing more as well for me. His positioning is really poor again. I think towards the end of the game, Elmo would have the ball out wide. And, you know, you'd think, you know, get all the players into the box. Get Trez, Grealish, Wesley into the box. But Wesley's out wide. What are you doing? You're six foot three. Get in the box. And I can't remember any points this season where Wesley's had a header that's troubled the goalkeeper. He's massive. Why, why, isn't, why is he not a threat in the air? Like I said, I think I can maintain the fact that he's not getting enough service and players aren't getting near him enough. But he, he could still be doing more for me. I think 100% we need another striker in January. I think 
Wesley's got a lot of pressure on him. Wesley's not stupid. He will know the fans are getting a little bit annoyed with him. Um, and he needs that pressure relief of another striker coming in. And, you know, that's only going to benefit Wesley as well because it's going to push him. Competition is absolutely massive in terms of positions. And when you've only got one striker up top, Keenan's injured. You know, he's still very raw, still very young. I know he's the same age as Wesley, but still. Codger... When Smith doesn't bring him on, I think Tom made a good comment on Twitter here. Talks about the Mings thing where he said, you know, and the captain should decide whether he stayed on. But then he said, having striker on the bench and outright refusing to bring him on a 3-1 down, what is the point of him being there? Great point. I think if you've got Codger on the bench and Wesley's having a bit of a stinker and you're still not bringing him on, it just screams volumes about the fact you don't have confidence in Jonathan Codger. And to be fair, I don't have confidence in Codger, but still, Wesley needs whether it's Morelos or there's all these names flying around. He just needs someone to come in and relieve that pressure off his shoulders. Some people on Twitter were saying, do we change formation to go two up top? But for me, I just don't ever think uh, Smith is going to do that. Some people saying El Ghazi go up top. Some people saying Grealish go up top in a false nine. But nah, not for me. I think... Unfortunately, we've got to persist with Wesley and just... He just needs a goal. He really, really needs a goal just to get his confidence up and... You know, just to shut up the haters, really. I know everyone's entitled to their opinion, but some of the hate he's getting is honestly shocking. Some people say he's the worst player I've ever seen in a Villa shirt. Like I said, entitled to your opinion, but just get behind him. At the end of the day, he's wearing a Villa shirt, so support him and just get behind him. It's fine to criticise players, but it gets to the point where hate is putting on players, and I don't agree with that. By all means, criticise them and, you know, express your thoughts, but don't hate on them and, you know, give them out outright abuse on social media. Moving on from Wesley, McGinn had another, you know, quiet game. He is absolutely knackered. I think, you know, he could have even been sent off yesterday. He booted the ball away, which for me should have been a yellow card, and then he got booked anyway after that, so he could have been sent off easily. I would have brought him off 50 to 60 minutes with 3-1 down. Game's over pretty much. Bring on Horahan. He's a similar player. He's got fresh legs. Take off McGinn. Give him a rest because the game's gone. Why persist in, you know, getting him even more knackered than he already is? On McGinn, Aaron says, We need to rest McGinn because lately he hasn't been himself and seems to be tired. Personally, I think Lansby would do well in the McGinn sort of role, but just needs that one game to recuperate himself. I said it on the Villa View podcast last week, the guy's absolutely knackered. He's carrying his country for Scotland. Um, you know, he's absolutely knackered. He just needs a week off. And I know he's one of the first names on the team sheet and that's never going to happen, but... He just, just take, when the game's gone, take him off, put on Horahan. It's not like that's a massive downgrade anyway, is it? <sighs> Moving on from McGinn, the passing yesterday from pretty much everyone was really poor. I think Grealish had one of his worst games, even though he did score. Um, I just think he was trying to do too much. Um, whenever he got the ball, there was three or four Leicester players around him. His passing accuracy was really poor. He gave, the way, gave away the ball about three, four, five, six times throughout the game. And that's really disappointing. I know he's our star boy and whenever anyone gets the ball, they try and give it to Grealish. But he was trying to do too much for me yesterday and it, it, just, it just didn't come off. Luis was poor as well yesterday. I think he seems to dawdle on the ball a little bit. He's a little bit slow, a little bit inconsistent as well. Because when he came on um, against Chelsea the other day, he was brilliant. He looked like the only player who looked up for it and the only player who looked like scoring. But yesterday, it just wasn't there at all. Look, I don't think anyone came out of that game, maybe apart from Heaton, with any, you know like praise because I think everyone had a bit of a poor game but um, yeah that's pretty much all for me um, Sheffield United away next week oh god that's not going to be easy but after that we've got the bottom three all in a row Southampton, Watford and Norwich which are massive massive games even Burnley after that Brighton as well that is for me what's going to define our season so leave your thoughts on the Leicester City game in the comments below leave a like if you have enjoyed this video um you know <laughs> oh god it's just scary isn't it are we going to get pulled into a relegation scrap uh, uh. like I said if you have enjoyed this video please subscribe check out the Villa on tour shop as well but that's all for me thank you very much for watching of the Villa <laughs>